the commodities complex is having a good day today, lifted by the rise in oil prices after the geopolitical tensions took off in the Middle East. But today's bounce aside, it's been a miserable year for anyone exposed to industrial metals. As the slowdown in Chinese demand trashes the price of everything from iron ore to copper to nickel. On here we've got one measure of the effect of China's weakening. Industrial metals here in red, you can see just how appallingly badly they've done, and the Brazilian real, the blue line, have both done appallingly. Now, more recently, Brazil's had a little bit of a rebound. That's uh, come as uh, fears about emerging markets have receded somewhat. But the broad pattern's clear. Brazil, as a major exporter of commodities, suffers when commodity prices fall. That really shouldn't be a surprise. The question since the summer has been how far this reflects the reality of what's underway in China. After the equity bubble popped and the currency was devalued a little, those who believe that China's headed for a painful hard landing gained the upper hand. But as prices stabilised, investors noticed that the Chinese were still going to work and buying iPhones, hopes for a soft landing returned, and emerging markets as a whole rallied in October, outpacing developed markets. This month's been rather more mixed, not least because the renminbi has resumed its weakening, although not particularly dramatically. And emerging market stocks have pulled back, even as their currencies, the renminbi aside, have mostly held up. A third option starting to look increasingly appealing, though. As I discussed in August, China could have something of a sherbet lemon economy, hard on the outside and soft on the inside. On here, we've put the main Chinese survey of manufacturing and services. And 50 here is the dividing line between growth, expansion here, and contraction uh, down below. Manufacturing shrinking and has been for a little while. But the, while the growth of services has slowed, this has come down a bit recently. I should say this is both of these lines are three month moving averages because it's quite a volatile series. Uh, while that, that growth has slowed somewhat, it is still growing. For the moment, it looks as though China's efforts to rebalance its economy away from exports and heavy industry and towards consumption are working. The problem for investors is to find something where that idea isn't already fully priced in. It's possible that industrial metals will fall even further if the manufacturing side and the heavy industry in China's economy continues to shrink. After all, in real terms, the price of many industrial metals still more than double where they were before China's imports really took off in the early 2000s. If that was to happen, you'd see sharp falls hurting uh, both emerging markets reliant on commodity production and, of course, the share prices of miners already bombed out. But after a fall in prices of more than a third in the past year for industrial metals and even more for many mining stocks, a bet on further price drops does need very strong conviction. That's probably pretty hard to get when anything that relates to China and particularly uh, the lack of trust in its data. On the other side, companies exposed to Chinese consumers and domestic growth are quite hard to find outside China, and those inside China already look extremely expensive compared to the state-owned behemoths which dominate the country's old line industries. China's grappling with some very severe debt problems. It's trying to follow a route which other developing countries failed to navigate smoothly. It may, if all this goes wrong, still end in a much broader crisis. But for the moment, it looks as though markets are betting on it being reasonably likely to have a successful uh, transformation. But at the same time, markets are beginning to recognise that even achieving such a difficult economic feat would be tough for those who prospered by supplying the old China.